In this uh, lesson, we're going to talk about animating elements in our uh, natron composition. In the previous lesson, we saw how we can create different uh, uh, parametric or procedural um, shapes, and also how to add a background, and also how we can import vector graphics like this uh, cat right here in SVG format. And also, we can create text. So we're basically exploring the draw features in Natron. And also, we talk a bit about transformation. So here, we transform and also use a mirror node. So we started to apply some of these um, really important nodes that are also uh, useful for animating uh, objects and uh, elements or uh, you know creating motion graphics in Natron. So this is going to what we're going to see in this uh, lesson right here. Now, if we look for free motion graphics, you will find a lot of uh, assets you can use. And also, to have a better understanding what motion graphics are, you can create infographics like uh, abstract effects or cartoons and whatever. Now, I want to show you this node right here. Pressing tab, I'm going to type noise. And I want to show you this first one because there are some nodes that are actually ready, uh, already animated. So if I just zoom in a little bit, because this is really small, we can see these little dots. Now those dots are noise. Now the noise is something that it's in um, actual cameras, so you can simulate this noise effect to make your uh, animation or whatever you're creating more realistic. It's kind of adding a, a defect of the camera. But this is to show you that this is already animated. If I press play, I can see the animation right away. I don't need to do anything. It's just preset for you. Now, if I double click on the noise node and go in the noise properties, here we also have an option that is called static seed. Now, this means that the, the noise will not be animated anymore, but will be static. So in this case, it goes like all the way around. Now, another one is plasma, and also this has a similar feature. So you can just play back, and it's already animated. You can see it. it's kind of a smoky effect. And you can also make it static if you want to use it for, um, you know, a uh, photo montage with a static photo, or, you know, you want just a static smoke effect or something like that. Now, you can also play around with the various parameters as usual, as we already know. And uh, it's going to change it slightly. And first of all, you're going to see like pixelated uh, preview. And then when you leave it, it's going to render out the, 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 the best quality result. So you just need to wait just a few you know, uh, seconds. Well, actually, just less than a second to see the effect. You can also use the RGB, so red and green and blue channels. You can isolate the effect you want. And so I'm just working with the green right now. And you can see I can play. And now I want to use just the red like this. I want to isolate the red. And I'm going to bring in with the read node, press R. Um, I want to bring in another picture, static picture here of this road. And then I'm, I'm going to bring this into my plus node and then the, the one uh, channel in the viewer there so I can see now the plasma effect I can change and mix the plasma effect on top of the road now let's get something more I want to have here um, an actual motion graphic so I went for this uh, motionarray.com which is a website where you can get free stuff if you go down here on the left in the filters, you can choose free assets. Now you can see there is a, some sort of noise also here and then some infographics. So I'm going to go for this just, you know, to make an example, I need to create an account or sign in with Google or Facebook. So I'm just going to use any, you know, any email uh, available to, to create a, a quick account. And I don't want the full uh, resolution here, just the, the free preview. Now we can see the, the author here, the resolution. We can see also the, the, frame, the frame rate or FPS. We can see the codec and the size. So we have some really useful information. So I'm going to save this again as a small preview file in my import folder, just to test how easy it is to get files from the web 
especially from these various websites. And there it is. So I'm going to read again with the R key, read and place this with the merge node. So M for the merge node. And I'm going to merge these two together. So one is going to be the background here. And then uh, let me uncheck this. Let me make some adjustments here. So on the right side, I want to bring the plasma and the background. And on the left side, I have the uh, infographics on top. And then you can see now it's totally overlapping with the, the other uh, asset on the background. And what I want to do, when you have a black background or a white background, total white or total black, you can try with some different blending modes and it will eventually disappear. Kind of is using a mask. So you can see here, if I press with the arrows, go down, I can see all the difference overlapping. So you can choose one of these and until you're satisfied. So I'm going to go for like green overlapping. And we're going to talk more about, uh, you know, a masks later. But this is not an alpha channel. This is just using the black background as, you know, invisible thing. If I use, for example, soft light, that's going to show up as a soft light on top of my composition, which is going to be fine. So if I play back, you can see now we have animated motion graphics. Well, we didn't animate it ourselves, but this is to show you a quick example. And then we're going to also create our own animated graphics. Now I can change the resolution here with a proxy of uh, 16 or 8. So it's going to be quicker to render. I can increase a little bit the ren the the render preview performance and there you go so that's you know just an example now before we continue with creating our first animation i want to talk about more of these buttons so this one here on the left on the timeline is going to create an in point so you can create an in point if you want your animation or your composition to start not at zero but let's say 43 frame which is where the CTI is right now, the current time indicator. So once you change the position of the current time indicator, you can press the in point and you can change the in point of your animation. We also saw how we can do this in the, in the other settings, but you can do it also directly in the timeline. So you can also set an out point, which is this other button all the way to the right of the timeline. So now we have an in point and an out point which are different from the main composition length. So if I play, you see this is gonna loop from frame 43 in this case and frame 103. So first frame is 43, last frame is 103. So you can narrow down your area of interest, especially for the pre-rendering preview right here. You can also over uh, array the FPS, so you can change the value there, but you can also do it again from the project settings. So from the project settings, you can see we can change the frame rate. So if we if we press eight, for example, here, well, that's gonna make it really slow. It's gonna slow down everything, but also we're gonna have more, you know, uh, jumps from one frame to the other. It's gonna be less fluid. So I don't wanna do that. So it's gonna leave the default there. And here frame rate, you can type like 30 or whatever. And that's it. So that's only going to be for the viewer. And you can also change the time representation in the timeline. So you have like seconds, minutes, hours, and like, um, you know, one tenth of a second. And all you can use frame frames. Now, usually it's better to use frames because we are talking about sequences of images here mostly. And you know turbo mode now this is to increase the performance of the preview in the viewer so if you activate this it's gonna like uh, take all the energy and bring it into the viewer leaving less energy to whatever else you're doing so basically it's using the ram and it's gonna usually it's gonna improve the performance of the random process and the viewer